Chapter 2041, South Emperor's Coronation It was quite shocking for Immortal Emperor Yin Tian to come in person in order to protect South Emperor. Even Imperial successors wouldn't enjoy this treatment. Otherwise, Jin Ji wouldn't have come to exploration grounds for his ascension. The emperors from the War Monarch didn't wish to leave that place back then. From this, one could see how highly viewed he was to both the Immortal Emperor and the sect. Emperors had numerous descendants and juniors. If they needed to protect each one, they would die from fatigue just from this task alone, no need for the heavenly execution. Because of this, just the Deo avatars alone were already amazing enough for these talented disciples and juniors. The palm in the sky hesitated with the appearance of Immortal Emperor Yin Tian. After all, no one would dare taking an Immortal Emperor from the Nine Worlds lightly. Rumble. In the interim, more powers from emperors exploded all over the academy. Clouds and winds came about as the world turned dark due to these oppressive auras. Even the devils would retreat before this impressive display of power. Resistance was futile unless one's goal was to die. More than just one emperor and monarch are there. The emperors and high gods spying on South Emperor shuddered. Someone counted, there were at least five imperial auras. It meant that with immortal emperor Yin Tian, there were five more emperors here to protect South Emperor. They came with their real body too. A student felt fear deep within while nervously gulping. This was guaranteeing that nothing would interfere with South Emperor's ascension. Even Virtuous and Jin Ji didn't have this treatment. The spectators realized just how important these emperors viewed this ascension. Perhaps they had absolute confidence in South Emperor or they wouldn't risk the execution to help him. The other two were considered the most likely to grab 12 wills. However, this was only a claim by others. The emperors still didn't directly protected them the first time around. To be frank, the emperors were skeptical about their abilities to gather 12 wills. It wasn't until later that the two managed to invite these protectors after spending great efforts. Jin Ji had to go to exploration grounds while Virtuous had his emperors guarantee a lack of ambush through negotiation. This wasn't the case for South Emperor. The significance of this event showed that he was certainly going to become a 12-will monarch so the emperors took a great risk and came out to protect him. Anyone would be apprehensive and in awe of the birth of a new 12-will emperor. Fellow Deist, leave or you will die here. Immortal Emperor Yin Tian declared as his might oppressed the area. The palm dispersed and the chaos energy returned to the world after hearing this. Clearly, the ambushers chose to heed his warning. Unless they came with a greater number, a slaughter would have happened going against Immortal Emperor Yin Tian's group. Everyone understood that the ascension was assured. No one would dare to go against this group of bodyguards. After all, they didn't truly have grievances against him so risking their lives to stop him was not worth it. The other emperors didn't show their face but it was clear that they were from Mysterious Bamboo. This was a sect only inferior to Archaic Repository in Arrogance. This was their time to show their true power to the world. The students here were so envious of South Emperor. If one day, they could have an emperor willing to protect them during their ascension, they could die of happiness, let alone five or six. Boom. South Emperor finally shouldered the wills and stored them in his fate palace. Suddenly, chaos energy erupted along with the aura of a monarch. He exuded strands of sword-like rays that rushed into the sky. Each ray could split the earth open and cut away the chaos. Rumble. His grand Deo appeared while his flame burned for eternity. This flame carried an ancient and enduring aura as if he was born from an older era, wowing everyone in the crowd. He has finally become an immortal monarch with four wills. Each of his gestures right now could move the great momentums. Immortal monarch. Even the proudest student at the academy still bowed before the lofty monarch. He recalled his aura and power but he was still as majestic as before just like a mountain lying across the sky. His ancient temperament looked like the river of time itself. He cupped his fist towards the other emperors. Immortal Emperor Yin Tian nodded and instantly disappeared with his peers. The imperial auras quickly went away. They couldn't stay out here for too long because the execution could come down at any moment. Four primary wills, if nothing unexpected happens, he might be the last monarch of this generation. Two more processes and he'll be a twelve-will emperor. The spectating emperors from the distant believed. Everyone was shaken by this achievement, even the unbeatable members of the crowd. Back then, the first three emperors of this generation never got a primary will. Deo Dragon Heaven Emperor's talent might not be as great but Jin Ji and Virtuous were famous for their gift. Nevertheless, 
they still couldn't get these primary wills. Now, this South Emperor came out of nowhere, taking four primary wills right away, Jinji and Virtuous could only grab eight wills at best in the future but this wasn't the case for South Emperor. He definitely had the chance to become a 12 will emperor later on. Moreover, he would have a much easier time due to having the purer and more accommodating wills. Will he be a second flame emperor? Another emperor wondered. If he were to accomplish all of this, he would virtually be a copy of flame emperor since this person was the only one known to have gotten four primary wills. Thus, he had fulfilled the first requirement. Later on, his advantages could even exceed World Emperor since World only had three primary wills. If that day actually comes, he'll only be missing experience and a true immortal armament. But with both of these things, he could even surpass World Emperor. Another was speculating his shocking future potential. Chapter 2042, Deo Courtyard The news of the ascension naturally swept through the entire academy and shocked many students. Even the best students from Emperor Mansion were speechless after seeing South Emperor's incredible style. Recently, the Academy had many geniuses but this year was especially noticeable. First, it was Virtuous and Young Monarch. One became an immortal monarch while the other became one of the most talented high gods. South Emperor came after them but now, his imperial path was wide open. The proud geniuses found themselves lacking before the Emperor. Mortal School produces such devilish students. Someone spoke with great yearning, the academy is about to produce a 12-will emperor. Sigh, I wish I could have entered that classroom. There were plenty of geniuses here but none was eligible to enter mortal school, not even virtuous or young monarch. Undoubtedly, the academy tried to groom South Emperor as a 12-will emperor. Everyone nearly forgot about the Dao lecture between Li Qi and Gu Kehang. Let's go listen to teacher Kehang now. The majority of the students ran for the Deo courtyard since no one wanted to miss it. The courtyard was located outside of Emperor Mansion. It was a great valley, not quite a courtyard. This was a wondrous place to learn the Deo. When looking down from the sky, the entire place seemed to be made Deo soil piled on top of each other. It looked quite coarse but after entering, one would feel the surging power of the heaven and earth. Deo laws were flowing beneath the ground. In front of the place was a steep cliff dark in appearance. It consisted of a single day a rock and hasn't experienced any carving. It was created in a natural manner and contained the power of the Grand Deo. Moreover, runic lines were all over its surface. In fact, the intertwining of these lines formed the rock itself. There were also runic flowers all over the place. The higher up on the rock, the more petals did these flowers have. Inside these flowers were names that could shock spectators because they belonged to famous characters, immortal emperors, immortal monarchs, grand emperors, and powerful high gods. These characters have lectured in this place before. For example, immortal monarch Yi Ye, immortal emperor Ken Long, and many others from the Hundred Race. People have already crowded the surrounding even before the start of the lecture. They kept rushing inside. Lecturing here wasn't only a challenge to the teacher but also a test for the students. Due to the special characteristics of this place, the Grand Deo was very alive here, harmonization could be reached much easier. For the lecturer, if they were to overestimate themselves and preach here, the failure would be made very clear. For example, if they had a deep understanding of the Grand Deo and lectured well, the entire courtyard and its Deo would resonate. The better the lecture, the greater the resonation. Thus, the reaction of the courtyard would make it obvious whether a lecture was good or not. As for the listeners, they would be directly affected by the resonation as well. The more they could understand, the stronger the harvest. But inversely, such a direct connection with the Deo could garner a negative effect and slow one's cultivation. This didn't mean that the lecture was inadequate. Perhaps the content of the lecture was not suitable for them. If a student were learning a merit law with a focus on ice but they came to listen to a teacher talk about the Deo of the Dragon Flame, that would simply be asking for trouble. The better the lecture, the resonation of the Dragon Flame Deo would be stronger. The dissonance between ice and fire would have negative consequence. Because of this, some were still standing outside. They wanted to carefully wait first. The first lecture was on Deo derivation while the second was on Deo heart. Both had no affinity so to a certain extent, no student should experience anything negative. Nevertheless, some students chose to stay outside for now before the beginning of the lecture. Of course, they could still listen outside but the harvest would be inferior by a large margin. 
The great resonation of the Deo courtyard simply boosted the result of the lecture. I wonder how many petals from the grand Deo flower will teacher Kehang be able to open. A student stared at the Deo cliff and murmured. There were numerous Deo flowers on the cliff, arranged in a specific order. The higher up, the more petals. Of course, they weren't flowers or carvings, just a group of runes. During a lecture, the runes here would also ripple. They were already densely packed so depending on the content, they would also arrange themselves to form these flowers. The greater the resonation, the stronger the ripples and more petals would be formed. In simple words, the better the lecturer, the more petals in a higher up location. Teacher Kehang's lectures are usually very profound, I'm sure his Deo derivation lecture will be incredible so he can probably create a five-petal flower. A hundred hall student believed. Yes, that shouldn't be a problem. A genius from Emperor Mansion agreed, it's a shame that he's still so young. If he becomes an ancient god one day, he might be able to spread twelve petals. There were many flowers at the bottom but this wasn't the case for the top. Of course, the higher ones had more petals. The ones with the same number of petals usually grouped together. At the very top were two blossoming ones with thirteen petals. These were the top dogs at this cliff. Alas, they were nameless. On the second level were six flowers with twelve petals each. Only two were named, Yi Yi and Emo Kinjun. The characters were impeccably written with a strong presence. The third consisted of eleven flowers with eleven petals each. Some were named while others were nameless. One of them was particularly well written with the characters, Immortal Emperor Ken Long. The fourth had thirty flowers with ten petals each. The majority were the names of Immortal Monarch. For example, Immortal Monarch Ji Lin. As one went down, they would see more flowers but with fewer petals. At the very bottom, the flower only had one petal blossoming. This is the splendid history of the academy. A student commented with a tinge of emotion. From just looking at the flowers, one could relieve the great lectures by the big shots that have been carried out here. Chapter 2043, Grand Deo Flower Yes, even immortal monarch Yi Yi had lectured here before. An Emperor Mansion student said with admiration while staring at one of the six flowers on the second level. Here, the lecturers could choose to leave behind their name on these flowers. Just imagine, immortal monarchy Yi had taught here and made a flower bloom with twelve petals before, quite a magical event. He was the first and the only one in the hundred race to have twelve wills, the eighth altogether in history. Even someone like him had taught here at the academy, indicative of the institution's glorious prestige. Thus, it didn't matter how talented one might be, all the students here knew it was the time to be humble. Grandpa Emo is amazing as well, not a monarch yet even better than one. A student from Sacred Institution said emotionally. Only two flowers were named on the second level, Yi Yi and Emo Kinjun. Few outsiders have heard of Emo Kinjun, but everyone has heard of Grandpa Emo and would naturally feel a sense of respect. Even emperors were no exception to this. Immortal monarchy Yi would refer to Emo Kinjun as teacher whenever they met. He was the longest tenured teacher here and had taught too many excellent students. For example, even immortal monarch Ji Lin was taught by him. Because of this, there was a saying at the academy, life is not wasted after listening to Kinjun's lecture. Sai, the academy hasn't organized any class for Grandpa Emo recently or we would be so lucky, an emperor mansion student said. Just imagine, his lecture was on the same level as a twelve-will monarch. One could easily see how profound it would be. Well yeah, Grandpa Emo would only do one lecture whenever he feels the itch again. I heard the last lecture was 5,000 years ago, so we probably won't have the chance. A senior said. Who left the two flowers at the very top? One young student asked with curiosity. The two at the top had 13 petals without signatures. Since immortal monarchy Yi and Emo Kinjun could only reach 12 petals, it meant that there were two people above them in lecturing skills. No one should be able to surpass them in terms of Deo comprehension and explanation, so this was quite shocking indeed. It's a mystery, one of the most interesting ones at the academy. A senior shook his head, there are too many legends about it. He paused for a bit and continued, the most believable and logical one is that they were left by the founders, Immortal Emperor Fei and Deep South Divine Emperor. Everyone felt that this made sense. After all, these were the starters of an ultimate expedition and should be able to surpass immortal monarchy yeah. Not necessarily. Someone who had looked into this disagreed, there are many records about these two flowers at the academy but none are that detailed. 
There's one reason why Deep South Divine Emperor shouldn't be involved. Back then, the Hundred Race was still weak while the Three Races reigned. The Divine Emperor had indeed taught in this place before but in my personal opinion, it was because Immortal Emperor Fei was his son-in-law, and that he wanted to show his attitude and stance towards the Three Races. But, if you were to tell me that he would leave his Deo Essence and learning to ordinary cultivators from the Hundred Race, I find that very unlikely. He spoke with reasons in an amicable manner. Then who if not Deep South Divine Emperor? We'll say that one of them is from Immortal Emperor Fei, what about the other one? A junior said. That's the most interesting part. A very long time ago, records about these flowers have been erased. No one actually knew why. Among the scattered remains of these texts, some had bold speculation that neither Immortal Emperor Fei nor Deep South Divine Emperor left these flowers behind. The senior revealed. Who could it be then? The students remained skeptical because they couldn't come up with another being capable of leaving this level of Grand Deo flower. Well, that's why it is still an unsolvable mystery at the academy to this day. The senior smiled in response. As time passed, more students came around. Even a few teachers were joining in. Gu Hang still wasn't here yet but students were sitting down in the courtyard. They were completely confident that his lecture would greatly benefit them via Deo resonation. The three scions have arrived as well. After several days of recuperation and taking medicines, Six Sword Young King was perfectly fine now. The injuries were serious but didn't actually hurt his weak spots. The scions are here. The students quickly came to greet them. While people were greeting each other, Frisky Young Lord climbed up the stage and stared at the students. Sunji has been asked by Teacher Kehang to start a preamble for his lecture so that everyone will know what the content will be, whether it is suitable or not. He said, please excuse my audacity for outlining the Deo Derivation lecture first, feel free to point out any mistakes. This introduction didn't surprise people at all because the young lord had taken over for Kehang in the classroom in the past. It was suitable and reasonable for him to do the introduction right now. After hearing the outline, the students could decide whether to stay or not. This was good preparation done by Gu Kehang. Though Frisky was only a student, there was no restriction for people to lecture at the Deo courtyard. Moreover, he was a high god already so he was certainly qualified to lecture on this stage from multiple perspectives. Six Sword and Rumination entered without any hesitation after seeing this to show their support. Remember, they were the leaders of Hundred Halls and Sacred Institution right now so many students followed them. Plus, this preamble wasn't going to be bad at all. Frisky has done a good job in the past teaching at Hundred Halls. Some students from Emperor Mansion came as well. They needed to give Frisky some face since he was the leader of this classroom. Suitability didn't matter too much, the courtyard was already filled with students. Today we'll start with a lecture on Deo Derivation. It consists of Teacher Kehang's recent findings on the Grand Deo, the lifeblood of his research, even. Though he wouldn't dare to claim that it's peerless, the explanation will certainly be unique and effective. Frisky began. Chapter 2044, Lectures. Frisky was eloquent and well-prepared, speaking as smooth as the flow of water or the drifting of the clouds. This was due to his experience with previous lectures in place of Kehang. Thus, despite being before a large crowd, he remained cool and collected. One had to admit that he was quite capable in this regard. If his cultivation continued to increase, he would have the chance to become a teacher at the academy. Deo derivation focuses on maximizing the power of merit laws. Thus, he had created a method to invoke their potential, so that the user could maximize the effect to a boundless level, a deluge of heavenly flowers and Deo came out. Buzz. The Deo laws in the courtyard began to move like flowing water. Some jumped like elves or danced like fairies. Just like that, the runic lines on the cliff also fluctuated with ripples and waves, as if wanting to create supreme symbols. In the beginning, the students were here only to show their support or to flatter the three scions. However, the lecture became increasingly deep and discerning, robbing the breath of the listeners outside. Thus, more and more students made their way into the courtyard from all three classrooms. The majority of hundred halls were here and even some from Emperor Mansions came in. Buzz. The buzzing of Deo resonation came about as the students became more and more immersed. Their own grand Deo began to harmonize with the courtyard with laws appearing and weaving around them. The power of these Deo poured out like the surging spring into the students so they became quite comfortable. In this place with strong resonation, the more they understood, 
the stronger they became from gaining the power of the Dao, it would be much easier to open Dao laws as well. The students here had different resonation level and varying degree of benefits. As for the one outside the courtyard, they didn't enjoy this Dao resonation since it required a physical presence inside. It wasn't that easy to sync with the Grand Dao, it required the perfect circumstances. The ones who didn't join were those who had some feud with Frisky or the extremely talented and powerful students. Just like that, when Frisky was finished, more than half of the students in the academy have joined the courtyard to listen. The Grand Dao is magical with countless arts, Teacher Kahang is simply picking one path in this ocean, Frisky eloquently finished his introduction. Well said. Thunderous resonations erupted in the courtyard along with the cheers from the audience. Rumination and Six Sword were the first to start clapping and cheering. Though they did try to move the crowd, the lecture was truly well done. Frisky could become a teacher at the academy after several more years. Buzz. The wall was rippling with multiple waves of runes. Finally, they wove together to form a grand Dao flower. After the waves dissipated, the flower had two petals blossoming. Frisky young lord is indeed extraordinary, he'll be able to stay as a teacher in two years. Sighs and praises came about. Right, he can really become a teacher. Many students clamored. Frisky left behind his signature, Wang Sunji. He then smiled and said, Please excuse my insufficient introduction, it couldn't completely bring out all the profundities of teacher Kehang's arts. You have done very well. A lofty voice answered him, if you have made your debut several years earlier, you might have caught up to me already. A person was soaring through the sky in a majestic and free manner like a scholar coming out of a painting. He had plenty of nobility and elegance instead of an oppressive aura in each of his gesture. Nevertheless, People felt an uncontrollable sense of respect and would stand up to greet him. Teacher. All students got on their feet. Some students even started shouting. He's so charming. Not only is he the number one genius at our academy, he's also the most handsome. A few female students nearly drooled after seeing his supreme style. In fact, plenty of girls at the academy had a crush on him. This was no secret. A dragon among men like him would attract attention and love at first sight wherever he went. Gu Kihang. A few higher level students sighed with all kinds of emotion after seeing him. At the academy, one could graduate after three to four years. However, some were willing to stay and train for longer. Granted, they needed to pass the stringent requirements from the academy to linger around. Who didn't know about young monarch Gu Kihang at the academy? He was the youngest high god in this generation and most promising to become an ancient god. These students who were in the same class at him became wistful. They were still learning while he had become a teacher with the greatest potential as a high god with seven totems. The gap was evident, no wonder why they became emotional after seeing their peer. After he made his entrance, the students outside rushed in like a tsunami. Even the arrogant students from Emperor Mansion were ready to listen now. In the blink of an eye, the courtyard was filled to the brim. Fewer than few students weren't actually present in the courtyard. The previous older students, many of whom were high gods, had no interest in Frisky earlier. After all, he hasn't reached the right level to earn their attention. This was no longer the case when Gu Kehang came in. After hearing the introduction, some of these high gods felt that maybe this lecture was worth it. Rumination commented after seeing the waves of people. Teacher Kihang has too much charisma. The amount of people here is the same as the lectures from the older teachers. His Dao comprehension is far above many high gods. He's just young so after more years of training, he'll be able to catch up or even exceed the older teachers. He'll be an ancient god for sure, so his achievements aren't something that one nobody could reach. Frisky replied. Hmph, damn right. Teacher's lecture will be brilliant enough to take down that Li guy, he'll leave in embarrassment. Someone like him wants to compete against Teacher Kehang? He doesn't know his own limits. Six Sword snorted. He and Li Qi have broken off all courteous pretense so there was no need for him to mind his words. On the other hand, Rumination and Frisky only smiled back, not wanting to go all out. Frisky said with a suggestive smile, Just wait and watch, Teacher Kehang is about go and show us something amazing. Meanwhile, Kehang was starting, in my recent cultivation session. I have learned a bit more about the Dao. Not wishing to be selfish with my findings, I am here to share it with everyone. Dao derivation is a common topic for cultivators, it pertains to the core of cultivation and the ultimate profundity of how to create and use the Grand Dao. Chapter 2045, 
supreme talents. Gu Kihang began with magical words and the Dao turned into the myriad laws. The resonation began not long after his start. In just a short time, he completely captivated many students, both the seniors and juniors. Those from the same class were still attracted by the content and quickly sat down in the courtyard. Only a little number of students were still outside for different reasons. He's doing well. Other young teachers showed up and one of them nodded approvingly. He entered the courtyard as well. Teacher Zhou, you're here now? Gu Kihang's lecture is indeed excellent. The students outside saw this group of teachers and said. Kihang was a talent worthy of admiration and would be a big shot at other places. Alas, at the academy, a high god with seven totems wasn't much. There were plenty of older teachers here with ten totems and up. Plus, most teachers used to be supreme geniuses once and might just be a little inferior to Kihang, talent-wise. Thus, the teachers from the last generation didn't come to listen while the young ones only came for fun. They wouldn't have necessarily entered the courtyard. Alas, after actually hearing the content, they entered because Kihang was doing an incredible job, enough to tempt the other teachers. He came prepared and should have no problem getting five petals. A student older than Kihang sighed and said, Yes, it is worth listening. Kihang's peer nodded and said with a tinge of regrets, Unfortunately, I cultivate only one Deo alone or I would think about his Deo derivation. What about you, why aren't you coming in? The senior saw a different student who was immersed in the lecture. Hmph, we're mortal enemies for a long time now, the guy answered, but, I do admit that this lecture is good. That teacher named Li Qi from study room will lose for sure. Despite hating each other, the students still recognized Ki Hang's abilities. The content is impeccable so he has a lot of potential given his age. Some older teachers can't compare to him. The senior lamented. Only Virtuous is on the same level as him but he's better at Deo comprehension. However, Virtuous bloodline is a great advantage. The rival said, I understand the guy too well. The fact that he dares to do this shows just how confident and well prepared he is. This Li Qi messed up by accepting the challenge since he doesn't know Ki Hang well enough. Once he loses, Ki Hang won't let him off that easily, it'll be a humiliating event. In the past, this rival had lost to Ki Hang before so he was aware of the guy's nature. He thought that this person named Li Qi was quite unlucky and might not be able to stay as a teacher at the academy in the future. Ki Hang's trying to establish his prestige, this Li Qi guy can only blame his luck. The senior nodded. The Deo is the origin of the myriad laws, the myriad laws can be formed from cultivation, meanwhile, Ki Hang was doing his thing. The students at the courtyard were glowing with their own Deo appearing. This majestic power surged like the spring resulting in a magnificent scene. The Deo cliff turned into a vast ocean. Everyone felt that they were meditating within this ocean among the majestic power of the Deo. In a short time, it became easier to understand the myriad laws, allowing them to exert their merit laws to the limit. Boom. Finally, the runes on the cliff rose higher like a tsunami. Rumble. In this split second, a long grand Deo rushed to the sky and resonated with the students. Their own Deo rushed upward like waterfalls. There was no doubt that the lecture was enough to create the profundities of the grand Deo and caused a sizable ripple to the courtyard. The laws here became animated and harmonized with his content. He had quite a deep understanding on the topic of Deo derivation. A grand Deo flower appeared on the wall with petals blossoming. Six was the final number. Buzz. It emitted a faint glow before taking its spot. Six petals. The students cried out in astonishment. Brother Kehang is amazing, I only got four petals last time. The teacher named Joe sighed and said, he'll catch up to the academy elders soon. The teachers here agreed with this evaluation. The guy could create a six-petal flower at such a young age meant that he would be able to catch up with existences like immortal monarch Ji Lin as long as he had more time. Amazing lecture. Applauses and clapping came about like the thunder during spring. All the students were excited and appreciative of Kehang because they benefited greatly just now. Teacher, you're our idol. So many shouted. Teacher, I love you. You'll certainly beat Teacher Li Qi. Some female students took this opportunity to profess their love. This person's fame right now is unbelievable. Let us leave now. Teacher Joe smilingly joked and told the other teachers. Thank you, everyone. Please excuse any mistakes I have made. Kehang remained cool and collected, impressing the crowd even more. The atmosphere remained excited with students screaming and cheering for him. 
It took a long time before the waves of applause ended. Kehang left his signature behind on the flower since it was a great achievement. It is your turn, Brother Ki. I am eagerly awaiting. Kehang left the stage and said in a classy manner. After hearing this, the students all left the courtyard like a receding tide. There was not one person left. They couldn't be blamed for their pragmatic choice. After all, Li Qi had never lectured at the academy before so no one knew of his skill level. Even those who were interested wanted to play it safe first. Plus, many didn't care about the topic of Dao Heart. It was intangible and wouldn't help cultivation too much. The courtyard became quiet again, a striking contrast versus the scene earlier. Is anyone staying? Even those who wanted to come inside the courtyard would find the situation very awkward since everyone is watching. What's the point of talking about the Dao Heart? We from Hundred Halls have no interest in this topic. Six Swords sneered and purposely declared this to the other students. Chapter 2046, Who's Coming for the Lecture? The crowd was waiting outside with darting eyes while the courtyard was completely empty, certainly different from the excitement earlier. Where's Teacher Lee? A student looked around and found Lee Ki nowhere inside all of this time. Gu Kehang didn't say anything. He stood and coolly stared at the stage in waiting. Why isn't Teacher Lee here yet? A student quietly asked. Ha, who knows? Someone from Hundred Halls laughed, Teacher Kehang did such a good job and no young teacher can surpass him. So now, people would just embarrass themselves by going up there, the guy might be too afraid to accept the challenge now. This student clearly wanted to flatter Gu Kehang since he was a teacher there. He's probably not coming if he's not here right now. Six Swords smirked, no courage to even come on the stage, how can he have any face to stay here as a teacher? Six Sword already had an irreconcilable feud with Li Qi so he said whatever he wanted. Plus, his father was virtuous Dao protector and Gu Kehang had his back as well. Someone's coming inside. A group brought their own chairs to the courtyard, Lu Jin's Hung, Gold Loop, and Ye Xing Xiu. They sat in a corner and kept a low profile with a humble attitude. It was as if they didn't want others to notice them. Everyone sneered after seeing these students from study room, makes sense, no problem for students to go listen to their own teacher. Ha, huh, if they didn't come, he would probably bully them later. The students standing near Kehang tried their best to make him happy. Though many were pointing their finger and mocking the group, they remained silent and ignored everything. Someone else is coming. Another student went inside along, youting from hundred halls. The content of the lecture didn't matter because Li Qi had treated her so well. Plus, she was aware of how powerful he was so his lecture couldn't be bad at all. She joined the other three without saying anything. Isn't that sister Yao Ting? She was relatively famous in hundred halls because of her achievements despite her humble beginning. Moreover, she had plenty of suitors as well. Several more female students from hundred halls came in after seeing this since they were good friends with Yao Ting. We should go listen to. After a clandestine deliberation, more students with weaker background from hundred halls also joined in. There were cliques in hundred halls because the students came from all over the world. For example, nobilities like Six Sword and the others formed a group. Meanwhile, the more grassroots students wanted nothing to do with them. Of course, this group consisted mainly of males and chose to sit next to Yao Ting's group of friends. Hmph, only a bunch of nobodies. So what if they gather together, still useless all the same? Another student from Hundred Halls snorted, these trashes can only band together with their own kind, not qualified to join anything else. But the moment this student finished, another girl had entered the stage in the same quiet manner. Sister Miao Chan. This student's jaw dropped to the ground as he questioned what he was seeing. Young King, it's Sister Miao Chan. A student next to Six Sword said. The King's expression became quite ugly, turning red then green. He couldn't speak from the sheer shock. Miao Chen had much more influence in Hundred Halls compared to Yao Ting and the others. Though people didn't know of her origin, she had the support of many students because they would come to ask her for questions. Of course, she was also popular with the boys. Furthermore, many knew that Six Sword had a crush on Miao Chan. However, he got beaten down badly by Li Qi and now, she was showing support for Li Qi, it was the same as slapping his face. No one dared to say anything else. The ones who didn't like Six Sword also followed Miao Chen inside. In just a short time, more than a dozen students were waiting for the lecture. There are people waiting but the lecturer is still late. What's the point of listening? Rumination scowled. 
The three scions were on the side of Kahang so they naturally wanted to humiliate Li Qi. Yes, this teacher is something else. Even the older teachers for our sacred institution aren't this arrogant, we don't need to listen to this crap. Another student added. Right, he's trying to act cool as if he's better than the elders. An Emperor Mansion student snorted. The elders were the ones who taught in Emperor Mansion. The students there weren't too happy to see Li Qi acting so arrogant, at least in their eyes. The Dao Hard is useless too, it will be too ordinary. Rumination said, everyone from our Emperor Mansion has a firm Dao Hard, we have done enough on our own, no need for someone else to guide us. Right, no need for us to listen to this Dao Hard lecture, it's a waste of time. Someone next to him chimed in. Excuse me for being late. Suddenly, a clear voice came about, signaling the arrival of a supreme beauty, Mei Soyeo. She also entered the courtyard and sat next to the other students. Fairy Mei is here too. The dozen inside became excited. In the beginning, only Miao Chan was an important character in their group. But now, this was no longer the case with Mei Soyeo around. Fairy Mei is going too. In just a short time, the students from Sacred Institution and Emperor Mansion glanced at each other with an awkward expression. Her beauty could drive the soul crazy and her talents were impeccable. Some even believed that she was more gifted than rumination but kept it a secret. Normally, her fans from the upper classrooms would crowd around her now. However, due to their disparaging comments earlier, it would look weird if they were to follow her in, especially the ones on the same camp as the three scions and Gu Kehang. If they were to join her right now, they could be alienated from Rumination's group. Let's go, my Dao heart is unstable right now so this can be helpful. Not everyone in the upper classrooms liked Rumination and his group so some geniuses decided to join in. Normally, they wouldn't dare to directly oppose that group. However, the most beloved in Emperor Mansion, Mei Suyeo, was in there right now so they had nothing to be afraid of. This added up to more than 100 students waiting inside for Li Qi's lecture. Humph, still no big deal compared to teacher Kehang. He had tens of thousands listening. A student snorted. Alas, Li Qi was still nowhere to be found and the ones inside grew restless. Just one lecture, does he really need to put on a show like this? Someone else couldn't help but scowl. If they didn't want to see Li Qi humiliate himself, they would have left already. Brother Qi, the students are eager to learn, wanting to listen to your supreme lecture. They can't wait any longer. Will you come on stage now? Gu Kehang spoke softly but everyone here could hear his words. Chapter 2047, Immortal Monarch's Arrival Gu Kehang sounded as if he was praising Li Qi to the students, but this was certainly not the case. There were only 100 students inside versus the tens of thousands outside, how could one describe this scene as the students eager to learn? It was a blatant mockery. Right, we can't wait to hear the lecture and learn. Another student sarcastically shouted. Ha ha ha. Blaring laughter erupted. It wasn't that the students here hated Li Qi but rather Gu Kehang was too popular and well-liked among the student body. If they had to pick one between the two, the majority wouldn't hesitate at all before picking Kehang since they didn't know Li Qi at all. Brother Kehang, don't worry, even the elders are willing to wait for young noble Li's lecture. A woman rapidly floated through the sky just like a goddess. No one would be able to stay calm before her. Teacher Qian Xian is here too. She naturally attracted the attention of the students so one of them shouted. Qian Xian said after arriving, great, not late for the young noble's lecture. She then took her seat. Everyone was stunned to see this since Qian Xian was definitely on the same level as Ke Hang among the young teachers. She didn't come to support Ke Hang but came early for Li Qi's. Ke Hang's expression naturally shifted a bit but he quickly smiled and kept his cool style. At this moment, Two more people were entering the valley. They seemed a bit unfamiliar with the layout. One was a burly man with a divine saber while the beautiful woman was more delicate and slender with a longsword on her back. They hid their auras and power so no one could read their cultivation at all. It's been a while, this is the right place. The middle-aged man looked at the courtyard and asked. Husband, where are you looking at? That's the Deo wall over there and the Deo flowers. Where else has these flowers at the academy but the Deo courtyard? The beautiful woman smiled and said. True, then we're at the right place. The middle-aged man scratched his head. The appearance of this couple surprised the students. They wondered where these two popped up from since they didn't seem to be teachers at the academy. They look so familiar, I'm sure I've seen them before. 
A student found this quite strange. You're right, I see that too but can't seem to recall. Another student agreed. Let's go, stop messing around. It's so rare that teacher would actually do a lecture, the woman told the man. Right, right, it's good that we're not late or I would have to slap myself. The middle-aged man smiled back. The two of them walked hand in hand to the courtyard. The students inside naturally stared at them. Seniors, please excuse my late reception. Qian Xian quickly stood up and went to greet them. Oh, you're so big now. No need to be so polite, we're closer than that. The woman smilingly said. The man joked, this little girl is about to be stronger than us. Seems like the future waves will keep growing stronger and better. Uncle Yang, you always tease me like this. Your sword and saber combination is unbeatable in the present. Qian Xian smiled freely like a little girl. I, I know who they are now. An emperor mansion student suddenly blurted out but he realized that this was too disrespectful. He quickly lowered his voice, that's the guardians of our academy, Harmony Immortal Monarchs. Yes, that's them, I've seen their portraits before in literature. A different student quietly agreed. Everyone finally realized why this couple looked so familiar since they have seen their gigantic statues at the entrance of literature. Of course, they also became slack-jawed, even two immortal monarchs were coming to listen to this lecture? How astonishing! These two monarchs have slain a grand emperor with eight wills before with their sword and saber. They were well respected as older monarchs but who would have thought that they would come here in person? Good, I'm not late or it would be a great crime. A burst of free laughter echoed in the sky as another person entered the courtyard. South Emperor, a student cried out. He had just become an immortal monarch two days ago with four wills. The guy was quite famous right now so the students were stunned again by his presence. The young generation will surpass us. Little brother, you will shoulder twelve wills in the future and become the pride of our academy just like immortal monarchy Yi. Yang Jinwei, the husband, patted South Emperor's shoulder and laughed. Dao brother, thank you. South Emperor cupped his fist in response, your sword and saber are invincible, a junior like me have a lot to learn from you too, who is the junior here? Guo Xinyu smiled charmingly and said. 1. Seniority isn't determined by age, you two were first on the Dao path so I am the junior. South Emperor smiled back. The husband and wife smiled before getting into their spot. At this moment, Yao Ting and her peers were scared out of their mind with a tinge of excitement. There was no way to describe their feelings right now. Remember, it was impossible for them to meet these legendary characters normally. But now, they could hear them chat casually. Sitting with an emperor was a fortune in and of itself. They could feel the emperor's radiance, this would be a conversational topic lasting for a lifetime. Even if they couldn't become big shots in the future, but they could still tell their juniors in the future that they have sat and talked with Harmony Monarch and South Emperor before. Their chest would be arched forward as they tell their descendants with pride about the event, that your ancestors have seen some big shots before. Damned old men, hurry up or we'll be late. You're so old now but still tardy like a student? Have you no shame? An old voice disrupted the frozen atmosphere. An old man with a cane walked as if he was flying inside. His spirit was still high with bright silvery eyes. The previous headmaster, a student stammered after recognizing him. 2. Geezer Shi, think you're cool because you can still go fast. Someone behind him shouted. Next, a group of old people happily walked into the valley, all with gray hair. A.M., Am I seeing things, they're all ancestors from the academy, why are they here? For the lecture. All the students became petrified after seeing this group. These were the strongest characters at the academy. Normally, they didn't bother giving a lecture at all unless they were in the mood. Thus, attending one of these classrooms would be the blessing of three lifetimes. But now, they were coming in droves just to hear Li Qi's lecture? Teachers. Yao Ting and the others couldn't believe that they were attending a lecture with these ancestors. No one would ever believe this if told. Harmony, the two of you are here too. One ancestor laughed after South Emperor and the two monarchs stood up to greet the old group. Famous monarchs they might be, some of the ancestors have taught them before. Teacher, if you lecture again, we'll certainly be there. Yang Jinwei laughed. After the quick exchange, these ancestors sat down. Yao Ting's group finally became relieved and sat down as well. They didn't dare to breathe loudly at this moment and were secretly jubilating. If they didn't come in early, they wouldn't have been in a position to walk in after these big shots were already around. 
It was an issue of seniority and showing respect. They weren't qualified to sit down with the ancestors and emperors. Some students outside were regretting their decision. If they had done with Yao Ting's group did, they could be sitting just fine in the courtyard now without breaking any formality. Oh, all of you didn't even bother letting me know and just sneak here? Think I'm too slow and would drag everyone down. Another old voice came about. An ordinary looking old man slowly wandered into the courtyard. However, all the ancestors and emperors immediately stood up. Harmony immortal monarchs rushed ahead and held the old man up, one to his left and right. They were as obedient as students before this old man. Chapter 2048, M.O. Kinjun. The students outside took a deep breath after seeing this, not knowing the identity of this old man shaking after each step. Nevertheless, just seeing the respectful treatment from the monarchs showed just how incredible the identity of this old man must be. Grandpa M.O., sit here. All the elders stood up while the old headmaster personally brought a chair for the old man. All of these ancestors were the longest tenured teachers of the academy, acting as the pillars with the strongest fighting force. The old headmaster was even more unfathomable with a high seniority. Alas, he still looked like a junior before this old man. Grandpa M.O., the students were shocked after hearing this all too familiar name. Even the young teachers were amazed. That's Grandpa M.O. Everyone understood why the two monarchs acted so respectfully after figuring this out. Only one person was called this at the academy, M.O. Kinjun, the oldest teacher here with plenty of high gods and emperors who used to be his alumni. Just imagine, who could surpass him at teaching at the academy? At the 13 continents? He wasn't actually that strong in terms of cultivation, weaker than many emperors and even high gods. However, this didn't deter him from being an amazing teacher. The most prideful and arrogant emperor around would still call him Grandpa M.O. With his presence, the rowdy crowd of ancestors and emperors became quiet and obedient. Thus, Yao Ting's group was even more nervous. This event was like a dream and would no doubt become the most honorable and prestigious memory later on for them. The ones outside were no longer in a position to enter. Even the young teachers couldn't do so without looking insolent and arrogant. Previously, only Yao Ting's group was there so it was fine for anyone to join in. But now, all of these big shots rendered this impossible. The crowd ended up staying outside and kept quiet, not wanting to disturb the ancestors. Nevertheless, a tempest of questions was raging in their mind. Just a lecture from Li Qi was enough for Harmony Monarchs to travel a long distance? The reclusive ancestors also came out just to listen as students this time around. In the end, even Grandpa M.O. has come out. This was someone who left a 12-petal grand Dao flower on the cliff. Who in this world was qualified to lecture him on the Dao? Gu Kihang was completely taken aback now. The smile looked rather forced on his face, his expression no longer as free and elegant as before. His lecture was quite exceptional since he had prepared very well. Confident he was in being the most gifted, powerful, and versed as teaching among the young teachers. He believed that this lecture could go down in history. In fact, he really did quite well. The majority of the students came to listen and he even left behind a six-petal flower. In his mind, this should be more than enough to crush Li Qi. He assumed that not many students would even come to listen to Li Qi's lecture. Alas, the abrupt development slapped him without any mercy. Li Qi didn't need to do anything and was already crushing him. The big shots here in person have proven Li Qi's worth. They stood here, waiting patiently while the young students became more nervous by the minute. The ones outside who mocked Li Qi before were pale with quivering knees because of their ignorance. If the higher UPS were to investigate this, they would have no place to stay at the academy or arrogance. The moment the ancestors made a statement, the imperial lineages and great power would no longer entertain them. Finally, Li Qi has arrived. He strolled leisurely towards the stage and was completely calm to see his audience. It was as if this was how it should be for one of his lectures. After he made it on the stage, the ancestors, emperors, and even a shaking old man like Grandpa Emo all stood up. Yao Ting's group naturally copied them despite their trembling legs. This show of respect naturally stunned everyone outside. Sit. Li Qi nodded and said. The ancestors finally sat down finishing this domineering and unbelievable scene. As we look up, just how boundless is the sky and vast is this world? Does our journey truly end at the imperial level? Does our limit stop at 12 wills and 12 totems? Li Qi began while looking at the students. All the ancestors became spirited with flashing eyes. 
The near-death aura was nowhere to be found as if they had just become much younger. What is there at the end of the world? Will we be able to reach that place and find out? No one can answer this question so we must try our best to find the answer. Many have traveled quite far on this path, Origin Heaven Emperor, Deep South Divine Emperor, Immortal Emperor Fei, Immortal Emperor Gu Chun. All of these wise sages have embarked on this journey. Of course, waves of sages have done so in even older eras. But, is strength the most important thing on this journey? Is it about possessing heaven's wills, treasures, and techniques? He stared implicatively at the students and continued, There's no doubt that power can propel us further, but only towards the darkness if we do not have a firm Deo heart. Chapter 2049, 14 The lecture thus far attracted everyone in the audience and those standing outside. Numerous have asked me, Teacher, are there immortals in this world? Li Qi spoke with a solemn expression, I often dodge this question because there is no way of truly knowing. Further deliberation would only leave a shadow in their mind. Today, I think it is safe to say that our realm, in the Nine Worlds and Tenth World, does not have immortals. But this doesn't mean they do not exist. However, they are not like in your imagination. Look up and use your imagination, perhaps you think that these immortals can live forever. But, on the contrary, what looms above could also be devils or unfathomable darkness. Immortals or devils? Devils or immortals? No one knows. But what determines their very being? Their origin? Their race? Or life experiences? None of the above, the heart dictates that, one of the Deo, your Deo heart will determine your future path and whether you become an immortal or devil. That's the main decider, not your cultivation, your clan, or the long years. The Deo path is endless and so is a journey. Cultivation is crucial to a certain extent, but your ultimate fate will be up to your Deo heart. The heart needs to be vast in order to truly utilize one's talents and see the true immensity of the world, his voice sounded like an immortal hymn. He took his time without focusing on the peerless merit laws or ways of cultivation, only about the Deo heart. This simple topic mesmerized the crowd. Even the emperors and ancestors were basking in the content and forgetting everything else. Only his words remained in their mind. Even Gu Kehang was immersed in this experience. The content was completely foreign to him since he didn't care about the Deo heart in the past. What was more important than supreme talents for a genius like him? In fact, Emo Kinjun was also listening attentively. This lecture had a different effect on people. The untalented decided to focus on perseverance, the geniuses wanted to focus on their goal, the truly strong such as emperors became wary of the future. The emperors were musing on the subject of immortals. What were these beings like if they truly exist? They also thought about how to stay on track on the path towards becoming a true immortal. However, there was no Deo resonation or laws appearing. The cliff itself seemed especially quiet. It was as if the laws and even the supreme grand Deo were quietly listening to him. All along, people judged a lecture based on the Deo resonation. However, they forgot about everything else at this moment. No one cared for the Deo resonation or how much they were benefiting. The future is still far away and one's destination depends on themselves and their Deo heart. Let it illuminate the way for you. We'll end the lecture here with this. Li Qi finally concluded. Everyone here was still in a daze from this brilliant lecture. As he was walking down the stage, the group finally regained their wits and started clapping like crazy. Clap, clap, clap. The upper echelon stood up and clapped with the greatest reverence while staring at Li Qi. The lecture was colorful and extraordinary. Even beings of their level greatly benefited from gaining new knowledge. A new door had been opened for them. From start to finish, Li Qi was concise and didn't waste a single word. He didn't provoke Gu Kehang at all or had no intent to do so in the first place. The flower is blooming. Someone shouted so all eyes turned for the cliff. There was a clear lack of ripples and waves on the surface. A flower quietly started to blossom like an orchid in the middle of the night in serenity, unbeknownst by anyone. 1, 2, 3, the crowd quietly counted the petals. 12. A student shouted after seeing 12 petals. No, it's not over yet, there's another one. Right when people thought it would stop at 12, the flower was still blossoming. 13 petals? A grand deo flower with 13 petals. A genius who didn't like Li Qi screamed. Everyone gasped after seeing this achievement even above Grandpa Mo and Immortal Monarch Yi. Remember, the monarch had 12 wills while Grandpa Mo was the best teacher at the academy. However, 
a young teacher like Li Qi had actually surpassed both of them in terms of Dao instruction. The third 13 petal flower is here. Teacher Zhou murmured, it has been a very long time since the last one. No, wait, it is still blooming. There's the 14th petal. The ones who were still looking at the flower blurted out in uncontrollable excitement. What? That, that's impossible? The highest so far is only 13, the crowd was shocked into disbelief. But this was clearly the case. This 14 petal flower was blooming above the two with 13 petals. So 13 petals weren't the limit. Teacher Joe murmured in a daze. All along, the 13 petal flowers reigned supreme on the cliff so everyone thought that this was the limit. Damn, they all took a deep breath. Gu Hang turned pale after seeing this. He has always been confident in his talents. In his mind, becoming an ancient god was only a matter of time. However, staring at the flower made him feel as if someone was ruthlessly hammering his chest, making it hard for him to breathe. No one could ever surpass this achievement, not even him who would one day stand at the apex of the Dao. After becoming an ancient god, would he be more amazing than immortal monarch Yi? Most likely not. Alas, the guy only got a 12 petal flower while Li Qi's had 14. Chapter 2050, Incoming Disaster The flower quietly blossomed in that spot without any fanfare. It alone was enough to establish Li Qi's position at the academy. The bragging geniuses earlier turned red and awkward. They wanted nothing more than to dig a hole and hide. This feeling was more unbearable than being slapped in public. If Li Qi were to slap them, then at the very least, they still got into his sight. But now, the guy didn't even bother glancing at them or utter words of reprimand. It meant that they weren't qualified to be yelled at by him, no different from insects. Another miracle. Mo Kinjun said emotionally, when will I be able to listen to another lecture like this? With that, he gently sighed and shook his head then limped away. The ancestors made way for him while Harmony Monarchs supported his pace to his left and right. The hope is still bright in the future. The old headmaster said, understanding the significance behind this lecture. It also served as a warning to the powerful beings. He bowed deeply at the flower then left. The other ancestors also did the same with a respectful expression. The students remained silent for a long time. No one dared to utter a word and break this tranquility. This moment of silence was the greatest showing of reverence towards Li Qi. Ke Heng was in a terrible position. He challenged Li Qi and did quite well for being so young. Alas, it seemed so insignificant and trivial in comparison. So many students cheered for him just a moment ago but everyone seemed to have forgotten his existence or his six-petal flower. It was too common and ordinary compared to the 14-petal one, like a plain girl versus a supreme fairy. Everyone would look at the fairy while forgetting about the girl, letting her drift away among the clouds. His face was becoming quite hot. Li Qi didn't bother to look at him once from start to finish as if he didn't exist. He started this whole challenge but in the end, the stage belonged to Li Qi, the main character, while he was only an inconspicuous clown in the corner. In the end, he left noiselessly like a dog that had lost its master while feeling that this was the most humiliating moment of his life despite a lack of retaliation coming from Li Qi. Six Sword Young King's group wasn't faring any better. They also left clandestinely, not wanting to attract any attention. The academy found peace after the lecture. The normally arrogant geniuses played nice and trained hard without causing any trouble. Li Qi also didn't leave study room and was doing something behind closed doors. Min Yaxiu and the others got no idea what he was trying to find. Alas, the ancestors knew that this was only the calm before the storm. Nevertheless, they were confident in defeating it because they have prepared enough. More importantly, Li Qi was here at the academy. This would decide the outcome of the incoming war. Because of this, they were in high spirits, knowing that they could handle the attack of a 12-will emperor. Boom. Sure enough, the tranquility didn't last long. In one night, crumbling noises came about as if something was leaving its shackles. Everyone in the academy heard it clearly. The students ran outside in order to figure out what was going on. Look. One student pointed at the sky. Something strange was happening up above. The entire space of the academy was shaking like a tsunami while the academy was a victim ship in the very center. Who knows how long it would last. Clank. The source of the fluctuation came from a little pagoda made from runes, not metal. The entire thing was surrounded by Dao chains of unknown origin. Its majestic aura could suppress everything for eternity. The pagoda was trembling, wishing to escape from these chains. 
Each vibration was stronger and more violent than the previous. The chains retaliated by coiling even tighter as if wanting to break the pagoda to pieces. However, the pagoda was a tough one and only grew tougher as the bout went on. Just like that, space itself was affected. What the hell is going on? The students were startled and confused. Ring. The gong of the academy resounded with the voice of the headmaster imposing down on each corner of the academy. Due to the unusual occurrence, all students head for the safeguard fort right now or face the consequence. The stern warning woke up the students. They finally realized the gravity of the situation and quickly headed for the fort, not daring to come out. Of course, some bold students thought they were strong enough with protective treasures to stay outside and watch. Others had questionable motives and didn't head for the fort. The academy didn't bother telling them otherwise. This event could also serve as life or death training. Boom. The pagoda finally broke through the chains and created a terrible spatial eruption. This tidal wave of spatial entity engulfed the academy entirely. The entire place trembled like crazy, on the verge of collapse. The students were scared out of their mind. Eventually, everything calmed down because this spatial fluctuation couldn't harm the academy in the slightest. However, any other great power would have turned to ashes. A few students came out for a look and they were met with a primordial aura. The, the outside world is gone. One of them looked up at the sky and screamed in horror. This made others come out and were astounded just like him. Though the academy was massive, one could still see the outside world from within its territories, such as other cities and countries. However, it was a primitive world as far as the eyes can see. Gigantic trees blotted out the sky while the mountains towered through it. Monstrous beasts roaming around had the power to devour the sun and moon. They felt as if they were in a different and unknown world now, no longer inside arrogance or any place in the 13 continents for that matter.